Welcome to week four and this week we are focusing on legislation. Now before you think, oh no, not statutory interpretation again, Nicola's going to teach us all about the purposive approach, and we're actually going to be doing much more than that. We're going to be looking at more than just a statute and attempting to read it and interpret and apply it. Obviously that's an important part of the research process for your final project. You need to know what the law is and how it operates, but we also need to engage in a critical analysis of the law. Statutes are the codification of ideals or objectives into legislation. So you take an idea or an ideal or a particular purpose that a minister or the government wants to achieve and then you create a series of rules that reflect or should at the very least reflect those ideals and objectives. It's our intention in the final project to evaluate those rules and ascertain whether or not they are effective at what they do and if not why. We need to critically analyse them, consider the system, the way that it works, what doesn't work and whether reform is necessary and then if reform is necessary how do we go about achieving that. So when we're evaluating legislation we do so with reference to the social perspective and also its governance. So let's take the social perspective first. We live by a series of rules every day without even thinking about it. Now some are formal rules like the road rules for example, whereas others are informal like the sporting rules in a football match. Now some of those rules are more effective than others at ensuring compliance. So if you think about a football match, there are a series of rules enforced by a referee. Some players will do an illegal tackle just in the hope that the referee won't see, they'll get away with it and they'll win the ball, whereas others play by the rules at all, time, at all times. And the compliance rates can vary from match to match or maybe from football club to football club. It's the same with legislation. Take the road rules. Some people end up with a lot more speeding fines than others. So for your project, you need to consider how effective the relevant statutory provisions are. What are the compliance rates? Think about why people don't comply. What's not working within that system? So going back to the football match, do compliance rates go up if you have more referees on the pitch, for example? Is it, is it the enforcement aspect, the, the problem here? Is that the problematic aspect of the system? Uh, does the system fail? Not because the rules are inadequate, but because uh, it's not sufficiently enforced or resourced? Or is there something else? Do the rules not accurately reflect society's values and ideals? Are they out of step with modern society? And is that what needs to be changed? Once you've looked at the social aspect, you then need to think about governance. What bodies or agencies are involved in regulating this area? Is it very complex? Are there jurisdictional issues? What number of bodies are involved? How effective are those bodies at ensuring that regulation is effective? And what reforms could improve the way that the system operates? Now aside from looking at the practical effects of legislation, how it is governed and how effectively it governs, we also need to locate materials that are connected to legislation. So in this module I will provide a series of videos on how to note up legislation. What I mean by that is how to find cases that have interpreted or applied legislation and there is a method of doing it which varies from database to database. So uh, the videos will look at noting up legislation in Westlaw AU, Lexis Advanced Pacific and also Osley. Now they will tell you some of the journal articles as well that have referred to legislation. So they don't just list cases, they also look at journal articles but their coverage is a bit patchy. The databases generally only indicate journals that are within their own database or are from particular publishing houses. 
So none of the process, none of the databases are infallible and you really need to look at all three. But if you do use all three, you will get a broad coverage of academic commentary that has referred to uh, the relevant legislation. But what's really useful is that you can note up what cases have interpreted and applied the legislation and that can really help you track the interpretation of the law and how it changes over time, how it responds on a practical level, how the court responds on a practical level to the application of the statute and that might be an important part of your analysis in your final project. So we have two activities for you to look at for this week's workshop. The first is to get you thinking about locating cases and commentary connected to legislation that will feature in your final project. So make sure you view the videos on noting up legislation unless you know how to do that already. The second activity is to get you thinking about regulatory networks. Systems often fail to live up to the ideal because they're too complex. They involve multiple agencies or multiple pieces of legislation, which creates duplication and gaps, or there can be enforcement and resourcing issues. So here we're not just looking at what the law says, we're looking at how it functions on a practical level. What organisations or agencies or bodies are behind it and how efficient are they? What problems are there with governance? Does the system require improvement and if so, how? An evaluation of the practical implementation and operation of any regimes is an important part of assessing why the law is not working and how it should be improved. Just before you go, I wanted to let you know that I'll be providing you with a series of basic research videos which uh, will talk about how to locate legislation across a range of databases, find things like explanatory memoranda and uh, second reading speeches, and previous versions of the legislation and connected regulations. Now, you should have covered that in first year, so you probably don't need to look at those videos, but what I'm going to do is provide you with a short quiz at the end of this video for you to check your research skills, those basic research skills. If the quiz, when you complete it, indicates that you need to refresh your memory on a particular one of those databases, then make sure that you look at those relevant videos on how to do that. It's time to just audit our skills and double check that we have all the skills that we need to complete the final project.